so I came to China about six years ago. Uh, it was late summer of uh, 2012. Um, the reason I came here is because I think if you want to understand the world, you have to see how fast China is changing. So I like traveling all over China and experiencing the diversity and the rising cosmopolitanism of modern China and its world-leading cities. Terms myself. So I'm Vasilis Trigas. I'm a research fellow at uh, Tsinghua University, the Belt and Road uh, Strategy Center, and also a doctoral candidate there. Um, and that's an amazing experience, a tremendous opportunity to be here at Qingdao and basically see the international partnerships of this region, of this town, with the Germans, with the Europeans, and with you know global uh, corporations as well of the city of the park. Well, what I, see, what I see here is that in just five years, I think, um, and it's a very short time, uh, the kind of technological partnership between Germany and China has really skyrocketed. And my understanding and my belief is that we have to share out the fruits of technology in today's world. Uh, when PhDs from Germany and other European countries relocate to the science park and integrate, discuss, synthesize and analyze ideas with their Chinese colleagues, new ideas, new innovations will be produced and that's good for China but also good for Europe and good for the world. So this is the second time I visited Chifu. Uh, I came here about four years ago and it's a very inspiring place. This is the cradle of the Eastern civilization, of the Chinese civilization, the place where Confucius was born. Um, you know, it's a very inspiring for me. Uh, now, what Confucius accomplished is to create something secular as sacred. Something secular and turn it into sacred. So I think that um, one of the reasons why Confucianism has become such an important philosophical school and remains uh, at the, I would say, at the hearts of the Chinese people after 2,000 years is that because Confucius himself and his disciples after him, like Mencius, uh, they did not only try to respond to questions about life, but also they tried to respond to questions about the good life. Um, how individuals um, can not only promote their own self-interests, but uh, protect and promote the interests of the collective, of the society. So what do I think is the reason for the rapid development of China? Well, I think the first ingredient is the uh, stability. Um, after the end of the Cultural Revolution, the Chinese came to an understanding that stability, political stability, is an essential element of progress, uh, of growth. Uh, and within the process of stabilizing the society, they came up with industrial policies. Industrial policies have long-term vision. You need to direct resources from the financial sector to the real productive sector of the economy. And in the past 40 years, through the reform and opening up process, uh, China has diverged, diverged a lot of, um, um, of resources towards industry, manufacturing, and eventually today to high level, high quality manufacturing. Uh, I would think the third ingredient is science and technology. China is a secular society. Uh, Confucianism, uh, Confucius turned the secular into sacred. He, created a mindset, a form of mentis, uh, where people worship um, ancestors, they worship nature as a pagan world, uh, and also struggle to invent new ideas, uh, to endeavor in scientific research. So those three elements, stability, industrial policies with long-term planning, and scientific, technological uh, development are at the core of uh, the Chinese miracle for the past 40 years. Um, basically, you know, back in the late 70s, China was an economy of the size of Spain. Uh, and in like 40 years, it grew up with a double digit 
uh, levels of growth and now it has become the second largest economy on GDP, on nominal GDP terms, or the first largest economy on uh, uh, purchasing power parity in GDP terms. And honestly, I think the process should continue. I think if China is to become not just a superpower, but a model for other countries to emulate, it should continue reforming and opening up. But also, I think it's essential to underline the importance of human capital. If the best and brightest have an incentive to come to China, uh, this will do, you know, this will produce um, um, great growth for the economy and also uh, kind of uh, great um, osmosis uh, for the society in terms of ideas um, and you know reach the time by 2049 uh, the centenary anniversary of the People's Republic where China will be a pro progressive modern cosmopolitan nation.